Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at an expression, an infinite tower with powers. We have the cube root of 3 to the power, the cube root of 3 to the power, cube root of 3, so on and so forth, and this goes on forever. And we're going to try to evaluate this expression. Obviously, there are a few questions we need to answer. First of all, does an expression like this always converge to a finite value? So we're going to look at it from different angles, and let's get started. First of all, whenever you see an expression like this, it would make sense with infinite radicals, nested radicals, with uh, infinite fractions or continued fractions. Always set the whole thing, or a big part of it, equal to a variable. Let's go ahead and choose x in this case. I'm going to be using x for the result. So instead of question mark, let's just go ahead and call the whole thing x. Now what does that imply? This is kind of like an infinite power tower, which is made up of the same thing over and over. Now when I say something like cube root of 3 to the power, cube root of 3 to the power, cube root of 3, I'm not talking about the cube root of 3 to the power cube root of 3 and then take that and raise it to the power cube root of 3. I'm actually talking about putting the parentheses here, but they're not written because we're going to have that infinitely many times. So that's what's understood. First of all, let's make that clear. And now we're going to go ahead and notice that the same expression is contained here. So if I call this whole thing x, it's going to repeat forever, and this is also going to be x. Now this really simplifies the problem a great deal and gives us a simple equation. Well, sort of, not very simple, but this becomes cube root of 3 to the power x equals x. Now what does that mean? It means we're going to solve for x, and this is just an exponential, somewhat exponential equation, but one thing that would make it easier, let's cube both sides. The cube can act inside the parentheses and turn this into a 3. So I'm cubing both sides. That gives me 3 to the x equals x to the power 3. Okay, that, that, does that make sense? I hope it does. Now, this equation looks much, much better, right? Wait a minute. Doesn't x equals 3 satisfy this? Yes, absolutely it does. x equals 3 actually satisfies this equation, but that's not the only solution. Now, if you graph f of x equals 3 to the x and g of x equals x cubed, you're probably going to realize that you get an exponential function that looks like this. And x cubed is actually going to look like this and then kind of look like that. And these functions are going to intersect at a point. But that's not the only point they intersect. Why? Because the exponential is going to catch up. Obviously, that is going to grow much faster and intersect again. So if you go ahead and check the intersection points or use some type of calculator, you're going to realize there are two solutions to this equation. x equals 3, and the other one is not an equal sign, but approximately 2.47805. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. What are we going to do? Well, we have to decide because we're kind of looking at a numerical expression when I say something like the cube root of 3 to the power cube root of 3, to the power cube root of 3, this cannot have two answers. It has to have a definite answer if it exists. Of course, convergence is an issue. We need to talk about it, and we're going to talk about it. So let's go ahead and look at this problem from a functional perspective. y to the power y to the power y. Let's go ahead and call this equal to x. Remember, our original expression was set equal to x, so I'm going to keep the x on the right-hand side, which is the result, and y is going to be my constant base. Make sense? That's how they uh, kind of interact. Now, from here, obviously, we can use the exact same approach, and since this whole thing is equal to x, this is the same thing as x, so I'm going to call that x, and from here we get something nice like y to the x equals x. But we can make this nicer by raising both sides to the power of 1 over x. Obviously, x is not 0 if y is not 0, and if y is 0, I don't know what's going to happen to x. 0 to the power of 0 is very problematic, and you have infinitely many zeros, which is infinitely many times problematic. Anyways, if you raise both sides to the power 1 over x, you're going to get x is going to cancel out, 
you're going to get y equals x to the power 1 over x. Now this is awesome because this can be expressed as a function. We can differentiate it, look at its maximum and minimum, and we've not done before. We've done that before. Hopefully you've seen that. But let's go ahead and write this as e to the power ln x to the power 1 over x. And let's go ahead and move this 1 over x, and this becomes y equals e to the power ln x over x. Because I could write it as 1 over x ln x, but it's better to write it as e to the power ln x over x. Make sense? So this is my y, and you hopefully know why. And I'm going to differentiate it. To differentiate it, remember, e to the power u by the chain rule is just going to be the same thing first times the derivative of the inside by chain rule, which is the derivative of ln x over x. But that's the quotient rule. The derivative of ln x multiplied by x minus the derivative of x times ln x. Make sense? x can cancel out, leaving us with 1. And now y prime, the derivative of y, which we as uh, defined it, 1 minus ln x. And of course, why do we differentiate? We want to find horizontal tangents, maxima, minima, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and set the derivative equal to 0. From here, e to the power of something cannot be 0 in the real world, and I don't think it happen, can happen in complex world either, but we're going to be focusing on this. If this is 0, then ln x equals 1, which implies x equals e. So, at x equals e, we actually have a maxima or minima. By making a table, you can tell it's going to be a maximum. Now, the y value is going to be e to the power of 1 over e at that point, so this is my point, literally, and this value is approximately 1.44. Make sense? That's going to be important, of course. Now, here's the thing. The maximum y value is about 1.44 for x equals e. Make sense? So focus on the maximum y value. Now, here's what we're going to say about this. If you have an equation like y to the y to the y dot 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 equals x. This, this equation has a solution only if x is between 1 over e and e. Now e is about 2.718 and 1 over e is going to be 0 0.36 something, right? Now, in other words, here's what's going to happen. y to the y to the y is going to converge if y is between e to the power negative e, which is e to the power 1 over e, or 1 over e to the power e, okay? Because that's how my function was defined. So basically what I did was I used these x values and plugged into my function x to the power 1 over x and evaluated my y values. So those are going to be my boundaries for y to the y to the y, so on and so forth, to converge. Make sense? Okay. Now, you might be wondering, like, what does this y to the y to the y thing mean? What does that mean, right? Well, we can kind of define it as follows. We can say, hey, we have a sequence, such as the first term is x sub 1, which is y. And then to find x sub n plus 1, just raise y to the power x sub n. So whatever the earlier, the previous term is, do y to the that, and you're going to get this all. It's going to look like this then, y y to the y, y to the y to the y, so on and so forth. So by defining a sequence, we can talk about the limit of the sequence. But remember, I told you that this has two values. We solved the equation, right? But the problem is it can't be a 3 because remember, there were two values, right? This cannot be a 3. Remember, this is the, these are the x values. But the maximum x is e. But 3 is greater than e, right? So this cannot be the result. This would actually be the answer. All right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.